Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony and welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talk. And today I want to talk about Eli Manning and what he could potentially do now that his career is done. There's always that question. Once a player retires, what's next? We've seen a bunch of wide receivers become TV analysts. You know, we've seen Shannon Sharp do it. We've seen um, Deion Sanders. We've seen him do uh, some analyst things for the NFL Network. Maurice Jones-Drew, they love hiring former players because they deliver interesting insight. We've seen Peyton Manning. He didn't join a front office like a lot of people would expect him to do in the beginning. He had the um, the show uh, detail that he's made. You know, he's analyzed Josh Rosen, what he's done great, what he's done bad. And it gives some interesting insight. Honestly, Eli Manning, judging on what he's been saying, He's going to want to live with his family for the next couple of years. He has a kid. He's like a couple months old. He's going to want to be a dad. And I think that's what it's going to do for the next couple of years. But he's not going to be able to stay away from football. It's been in his entire life. He's not going to be able to step away. And I think it's going to come drawing him back in. Now, there are a couple options for Eli. He can go, you know, TV reporter like the Tony Romo route. He can do that. But I think he, I don't think he's really made for that. I think he's a little bit too shy. He doesn't really have that many words. Um, again, we said, probably said the same thing about Tony Romo. He kind of, he kind of likes playing golf, that weird thing. It, it could potentially work out. He can steal the hearts of people everywhere. But Eli Manning, I'm not sure. Maybe years down the road, maybe take a Phil Simms route like that. Uh, I don't really like that option for Eli, to be honest. He could become a journalist and do some spots with ESPN and Peyton Manning. Have like uh, every once in a while come on the TV and analyze some certain player or something like that, and have his insight about an upcoming player who reminds us a lot about him or something like that. Speak about it during the Super Bowl week. I think he's gonna have spots like that eventually as he comes back. He's gonna feel his way. But a huge thing I think Eli can do is potentially be in a front office somewhere and be a quarterback's coach and be a front office guy and show how things are run. He seems like a really analytical guy. He knows what he's doing with football. He comes from a football family. And eventually I think he could be a front office role. But more specifically, I think he could potentially own a team with Peyton Manning. Now, there are a couple of reasons I think this. First of all, you've seen that done with John Elway already. And teams aren't really going for that much money. I checked it. And they're only being bought for about a billion dollars. Now, you're like, Anthony, that's a billion dollars. It's a lot of money. But Eli Manning and Peyton Manning have gotten $500 million just from playing the sport of football. Forget about all the nationwide and State Farm. And I'm not sure State Farm, but, you know, Toyota, different things like that. And they may be willing to buy a team, especially with the Manning family, the Manning family brand. I think it's a a definite possibility here. Eli Manning has a bunch of charity work and he does a bunch of things like that, but... I think that eventually his focus will be on running an NFL franchise. I think that it's it's possible that, you know, Eli Manning and Payne Manning can muster up some money and buy an NFL franchise. And let's start diving to specifically what team that can be because I think it's quite interesting. Now, the thing about NFL franchises is that they're becoming more and more expensive. You have David Tepper, who, who's like worth 10 or $11 billion, who just bought the Carolina Panthers. And they're going to be in high competition. And what we noticed from before with your Derek Jeters, with your former players like your Michael Jordans, they usually buy the outskirt teams. They never buy the the team that they played for, like the Chicago Bulls, because those are inherently great franchises. It's usually people with a lot of money in the game. So I'm ruling out the Giants right away. John Maher and Steve Tisch, there have been some rumblings between them. Like They're not getting uh, together that well recently with uh, decisions. I mean, we haven't been to the Super Bowl in eight years. I know it's not really be that long, but been to the playoffs one time since then. And, you know, they had the argument with Pat Shermer. Should we fire him? Should we not? So there may be a little bit of rumblings, but I highly doubt that Eli Manning would go there, especially with the history of these two families owning this franchise. And, yeah, what I've noticed is, through my brief research, is that a lot of uh, teams are owned just by one person. It's not like two families. So the Giants thing definitely is unique, which I'm surprised it's worked so far, but... Um, one of the first teams I want to mention on this list is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's owned by Brian Glazer and siblings, so it's owned by that family, Tampa Bay. It's in the South. Buccaneers are a cheap franchise. They haven't really done much in the past couple of years, really since the whole John Gruden thing in 2002. Uh, they're a pretty poor franchise, so the young man can swoop in there. They're probably one of the least valued franchises in the league. I'll put up the list of most to least value franchises according to the last Forbes list or something like that on the screen but I'm assuming Tampa is not really the high in that list so that's a potential team that they can look after another team in Florida Miami Dolphins it's owned by uh oh it's Steven Ross Steven Ross and you know they just had renovations to the stadium you could say that 
I'm not saying he's the GM, but if the Tua thing doesn't work out, if they can't figure out their quarterback situation, and especially with all this mismanagement that seemed to plague Miami, can't win when 1-15, um, especially if they can't win without not in this division, the, the field conditions are usually awful. You, they can, Miami can be calling for the firing of you know, Steven Ross, or at least him to, for him to sell the team, especially if he does something racist or something, I don't know. Um, he hasn't done anything since. But if, especially if the Derek Jeter thing works out, hey, he, he may say, he may just sell it to Derek, uh, sell it to Eli Manning and Payne Manning and be like, you know what? The Derek Jeter thing worked out. Why not another New York guy? And um, sell it for $5 billion, $6 billion. Yeah, I think uh, Payne Manning and Eli Manning would want to do that, especially if there's somebody else, like a Jeb Bush, who would want to chip in a couple of bucks into that deal as well the next team i could potentially see is the los angeles chargers and this is because they're moving to a new stadium and if that thing doesn't work out dean spanos may be out of there his dad died a couple years ago and there may be pressure on him saying you're not like your dad your dad was better than you or you know that sort of thing and he's been cheap with money he's been very cheap and in los angeles you need to spend money and Eli Manning and Peyton Manning may have that swagger to come into Los Angeles, especially. It'll be funny, Eli Manning coming to the city that he was drafted to, or the team at least he was drafted to, and turning that franchise around, versus Los Angeles Rams. I think that could be a really sexy move. Uh, next, I want to briefly mention the Las Vegas Raiders, but I don't think Mark Davis is going to want to sell his team down the line. I don't think that's going to really happen. They just moved, have a new franchise, but the Oakland Raiders were struggling. Um, I, the, Mark Davis has that thing of being frugal with money. You know, they had to play a game in Canada, and they didn't even have the right field length because they, there's something wrong with the end zones. So if that continues in Las Vegas, I wouldn't be surprised if the Las Vegas Raiders come up for sale. And the rest of the teams have really historical you know, ties. You have the Green Bay Packers, the Detroit Lions, owned by the Ford family. Then you have the Kansas City Chiefs, owned by the Hunt family, Dallas Cowboys, so I don't think those uh, are going to be sold. The really last name I want to mention on this list is the uh, Cincinnati Bengals and Mike Brown, son or grandson of the founder of the you know Cleveland Browns. And we, I think this is a great, I think this is a great opportunity for in the Northeast, Eli Manning, Paint Manning have a stake in a company or stake in a team, pretty much a team as a company that T.J. Hushmanzada singled it out. You know, their first overall draft pick this year, and he, when T.J. Hushmanzada was playing for the Bengals, they couldn't even get their water coolers right. They literally had jock straps in the middle of the, the room and said, okay, try it on. If it fits, let's use it. If not, you're, you're going to have to squeeze into it pretty much. So the Bengals are an inept franchise. Eli Manning and Payne Manning maybe look like, you know what? This team's on rock bottom. Let's just come in and let's see if we can buy this team. And uh, especially in the Rust Belt in the Northeast, it may be on for the cheap, and the Bengals haven't really done much. And they could be like, you know what, let's get uh, Pay Manning, Eli Manning in. I think the city will welcome them with embrace. Um, obviously, it's not like GMs and coaches. It's not, but I think that Eli Manning and Pay Manning can go into the city like, we have nothing to lose here. And, yeah, so if you want me to create a more detailed list or more go more in-depth, I think this is enough. I, I really do. How much do you want me to speculate about, well, this owner's grandson is tied to this cousin's niece or something like that? But I've had to rank them probably... Eventually, one would be the Cincinnati Bengals, two, the Los Angeles Chargers, three, Miami, four, Raiders, five, Buccaneers. That, that would be my list. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, the press conference, everything we discussed in this video, um, I think it's interesting. I, I think it's really interesting to see where Eli Manning goes next. Does he, does he get a reporter role and does he try to be a journalist or something like that and speak about sports and have like a weekly hit? Does he follow like a Peyton Manning thing? Does he work with Peyton Manning and do something pretty cool? I don't know. It'll be interesting. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.